Hi everyone, I'm Jeff from PhotoWalk Pro and I've got just under 10 minutes to show you how I use uh, Adobe Photoshop to process a HDR image into a, uh, a non-HDR image, into a, back into an 8-bit, a 16-bit or 8-bit space. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Now here I have an image that's already been processed. This is the 32-bit file that you're looking at. Uh, I processed this using Photoshop. I'm not going to show you how because I've done that in a previous tutorial. Um, and just it'll help us save a little bit of time here but uh, this is the way the image would look when you open up the .hdr file into Photoshop you can see it's kind of flat it's kind of milky looking uh, it doesn't look that great well that's because my monitor your monitor anybody's monitor really cannot display 32-bit files but we're gonna take care of that because we're gonna make this look pretty sweet here in just a minute so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to image and I'm gonna go and change the mode because what we've got to do is take this back down into a usable space so when I change it from 32-bit, which you can see is checkmarked here, I'm going to change that down to 16 bits per channel. When I get 16 bits per channel selected, I'm going to get an, uh, a dialog box that says HDR conversion. Now, your box when you first time you open it will probably look like this, and that's okay. Uh, the first thing you want to do is change the method. And we're going to go drop down to local adaption, and you'll automatically see a change to your image. It may not be a better change, but it is a change. Um, but that's okay, because we're going to make some improvements. The next thing you want to do is click on this little arrow down here and open up your tone curve and histogram. And this is where we're going to make our, the most changes to our image. All right, I'm going to go ahead and slide this over just a little bit so I can see more space. And what you want to do is you want to start moving these over. Now, typically you would want to move that black point over until you got that set to the point where you've got the base of this histogram. Now you can see mine is already way over here to the left, so I've already got defined blacks uh, in my image. And my whites are almost all the way to the right, so that area is doing pretty well also. This is actually a pretty, pretty good exposure. Um, most of my tones are here in the middle. So that's where I'm going to make most of my adjustments. And I'm going to do that by sliding the tone curve around. And you can see I'm just kind of clicking and adding some points. And then by sliding them down to make things darker or up to make things brighter, I can adjust those different areas of the image. All right. Uh, the next step, and I'm, I'm just going through this really quickly for you, but uh, I just wanted you to see what the effect is. Uh, the next thing I would do is I would go ahead and change this radius and the threshold. Now I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here because um, it's really important, if, especially if you've got areas of sky, um, areas where you could possibly pick up halos, um, you want to make sure that you've got those um, pretty well under control when you're processing in Photoshop. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how changing the radius um, and the threshold can make a big difference in here. Now I'm going to take that threshold way up here, and you can see, there you go, there's my, my evil halo starting to show up here, where that blue sky starts to meet that darker canyon wall there. Now what I need to do is just back that radius down until that halo starts disappearing, and it starts getting a little bit finer. Now if I got a little bit of a halo, that's okay. I can take care of that, maybe with the clone tool or something later on. But you don't want a big giant one because that's just not going to look very good. So we're going to take this down just a little bit more maybe. All right, that looks pretty decent. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now this is going to do my conversion. And it's basically taking that 32 bits now, taking those tonal changes that we just made, those corrections according to the histogram, and it's going to map those to a 16-bit space for us. And that's going to give us uh, uh, the ability to do a lot more things to this image in Photoshop. Uh, the amount of items you can actually, you know, the amount of tools that are available are very few in a 32-bit environment. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this out as a 16-bit file. So I'm going to hit Command-Shift-S. I'm going to hit can Tutorial Canyon. That looks good. Now I'm going to save this as a TIFF. You can see you've got very limited uh, options as a 16-bit file, but TIFF is the one I want, not PSD, and I'll show you why in just a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK, and I'm going to just use the TIFF option defaults, and then I'm going to go ahead as soon as it's done, there it goes, it's done, I'm going to close this out, I'm going to go back here to my bridge, and I'm going to go, there's that file I just created with the changes, now I'm going to open it back up, but you'll see now it opens in Camera Raw, and now in Camera Raw, I can really start to do some nice things. I can take that recovery and pull it down just a little bit. Um, I can use my fill light just a hair. Not a lot of fill light. Um, I don't really need a lot of contrast because that will come later. Um, clarity, I'm going to pop that up. That really adds a really nice mid-tone sharpening kind of thing to it. And I'm going to crank that vibrance up just a little bit. Really get some of those colors to start to pop. Uh, then I'm going to go over here to my tone curve. And then I'm going to start messing with my darks. So I'm going to drag those darks down. 
And now you can see this image is really starting to come alive with that darkening right there. Maybe take the lights up just a hair. Okay, that looks really nice. And then the last thing I'm going to do in here is I'm going to go up here to my magnifying glass and double click that twice because that'll give me 100% magnification. And I'm going to come over here to my sharpening tool. I'm going to add about 89, 90%, somewhere around there. And then I'm going to hold down the Alt key and slide that masking over. And what that does is it, it actually applies like a sharpening mask so that your, your tonal areas like skies and smooth surfaces, um, as I slide this to the right, you can see they turn black. And wherever it was black, there will be no sharpening applied. So that's kind of a nice way of keeping your sharpening under control. And you can obviously check the preview button on and off to make sure everything looks really nice. Uh, when I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, Open Image because I want this to open in Photoshop. I'm going to do one more thing to it before we uh, finish things off here. Okay, now my image is open in Photoshop. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to Image, and I'm going to go down here to Adjustments, and then down to Shadow and Highlight. All right, when you open the Shadow Highlight tool, it might look something like this, and it'll look really cruddy when it opens up, usually because it, it sets the, the shadow amount to 50% and why, I don't know, but that's the default. So don't worry about that. What you want to do is click on Show More Options. Now, take this amount down to zero, and then we're going to build it back up, okay? Take that amount back up now to a to amount that looks respectable to you. You know, it's always nice to work at a, a level of uh, magnification that allows you to see a little bit more of your image. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Uh, then we want to play with this tonal width a little bit and uh, try to just really maximize the use of this shadow tool. Maybe play with the radius just a hair until it just really, really looks nice for you. I've, I've used this on a lot of different images and I can tell you there really is no one setting that works for everything. So you're really going to have to play with it and try to get the best that you can. Now the other thing that you can do is adjust your highlights but also, once again, be careful that you don't uh, start getting some haloing. And as you can see, as I slide this to the right, it does a really nice thing with the sky, but it starts to creep in some haloing right up here at the top. Now, usually you can get that under control with the tonal width and maybe a little radius. There's the radius looking ugly on there. Okay. Um, let me take that radius up and then back the amount down just a little bit. And... There we go. You want to keep that, that ghosting uh, uh, under control, those halos around the edges, because it really is that's the telltale look of, oh, look, he did, he did some nice HDR imaging. Okay, I've got that set, my highlights, my shadows. The last thing I'm going to do is come down to mid-tone contrast. I'm going to pump this up. It does some really nice work on your mid-tones. Uh, it's kind of like the, uh, there you go, a little bit more... Uh, work on those mid-tone values to sharpen them up just a hair, give them a little bit more contrast. And there you go, there's my my finished, I hit OK. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit, let you see. And that's our image. Now I might do a little bit more work in this um, because I just do a little bit more work on all my images just because I'm never really happy. But um, as far as the HDR processing goes, I'm pretty satisfied with this one. So I'm going to save this file out, I'll post it up on the site. And if you have any questions, make sure you leave a comment or send me an email at jeff at photowalkpro.com. Until next time, see you later.